for today we are going to talk about our next lesson which is evolution of traditional to new media so more on history tayo ngayon um, kaya maraming details sa libro wala masyado pero I had to add some details kasi I think uh, makakatulong na alam natin yung mga mga nangyari, mga iba't ibang developments uh, during the entire evolution timeline of media para medyo mas maintindihan natin kung um, ano nga bang epekto ng media and technology sa society during the time it was um, invented or during the time it was discovered. Okay, so this is going to be quick kasi um, parang details lang naman to eh, para tong history, papasadahan lang natin ang karamihan ng mga details dito. Okay? So, um, uh, this is the first question na nandun sa forum ninyo, yung A-Titanic uh, News. So, hindi ko na siya masyadong, masyadong pag-uusapan kasi gusto kong malaman yung sagot ninyo. Doon sa first question natin, kung paano kaya uh, nag-spread yung news, uh, you don't have to research. I, um, guesses will be alright okay lang tayo na mag guess kasi gusto ko lang malaman ano kaya sa tingin nyo ang, ang ginawa nila para maibalita yung nangyari sa Titanic before so okay lang yun, basta meron tayong intelligent guesses, okay lang siya. and then of course, if uh, the Titanic tragedy happened now or today ano kaya ang gagawin mo para uh, ma-spread ang news. Actually, may mga nabasa na ako and uh, marami naman doon. Very, ano, uh, real talk naman sila, di ba? So, sa panahon natin, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, so I am expecting answers related to social media. Kasi yun naman talaga, most likely, ang gagawin nyo, di ba nga, pag may, pag may lindol, imbis na mag-duck, cover, and hold, anong ginagawa? Mag-tweet muna tayo, di ba? Lumilindol po yata ngayon. Uy, naramdaman mo ba yung lindol, di ba? You go to social media, right away before actually <laughs> doing the right thing like protecting ourselves during calamities and um tragedies like you know sinking of a ship so yes i hope you are familiar with this one it's titanic um for the longest time it was the highest grossing uh, movie worldwide um two billion plus ang kanyang ang kanyang kita sa sinihan and then after that, around 2009 or 2010, um, Avatar ang pumalit sa kanya sa number one. Um, coincidentally, same director ang um, Titanic and Avatar. Um, it's uh, James Cameron. Parehong James Cameron yung pelikula. And then, just last year, with Avengers Endgame, si Avatar ay naging number two na kasi number one na ang Avengers Endgame but most likely dahil konti lang ang lamang ng Avengers Endgame uh, when uh, Avatar 2 opens and Avatar 1 is uh, re-released sa theaters most likely para oh, maalala ninyo na merong Avatar 1 bago nyo panoorin yung Avatar 2 so um, baka mag number one ulit ang Avatar sa worldwide box office so uh yeah, so this is Titanic. Yan, si Jack and Rose. Panorin natin. It's a good film. Uh, best picture siya, I think, no 1997. Um, this is actually your clue. Dun sa first question natin. But I won't explore that anymore. Kasi you can guess. You can give uh, your own guess dun sa tanong natin. Sa forum number one. Now, the evolution timeline is usually divided into these four um, ages. You have the prehistoric age, which is everything that happened before the 1700s. You have the industrial age from 1700s to the 1930s. So, industrial age, panahon niya ng mga machines, steam engines. And then C, we have the electronic age, 1930s to the 1980s. Wala tayo talagang sobrang specific date or year kung saan nagtatapos or nag -e end ang isang age. It's more on what major discoveries happened during that age. Yun ang way para um, i-differentiate yung bawat age in the media 
evolution timeline. And then the last one, the fourth one, is the information age or the new age from the 1980s to to the present time. Now, if you read our book, baka magkalituhan tayo. In your book, uh, it presented uh, McLuhan's version of the evolution timeline. So for McLuhan, it's the tribal and literacy age muna siya. It's comparable to the prehistoric age na gagamitin natin dito sa uh, PowerPoint natin. So para hindi kayo malito, doon sa libro, it's tribal and literacy age. In our PowerPoint, it's the prehistoric age. Letter B, the print age in the book, and it's called the industrial age in our PowerPoint. And then letter C, the electronic age, is the same as the electronic age in our uh, PowerPoint presentation. Pero ang electronic age, kinover na niya pati yung present time. And then the book just added two more um, ages, the information and the infrastructure age. So, nandun naman yung description kung ano yung dinagdag nila na yon yung information in infrastructure age. They just try to divide um, the discoveries and then the inventions that were, that happened during those times, during the information in infrastructure age, depende sa gamit ng internet and computer during our time. But basically, modern age, itong bago na to, bagong age na to. Okay, so for the prehistoric age, everything happened before the 1700s. So ito yung simula nung uh, nagkaroon ng tao at sila ay sinububang, sinubuhan na nilang makipag-usap sa isa-isa. Uh, pwede na nating mas masabi na nagsimula na ang uh, history of media and communication. So of course, everything started with oral traditions. Uh, verbal lang yan, non-verbal. Pwedeng signals. Ganon ang kanilang ginagawa before to communicate with one another. And then you have cave painting. So, when we say communication, it's not always about talking to one another. Cave paintings can be considered as communication as well because it's a medium. Meron kang gustong sabihin through your artwork, through your painting. So, we can consider that as a uh, means to communicate with one another. So, Cave paintings, they appeared as early as 40,000 years ago. Uh, most cave paintings have been discovered in Europe. But of course, dun kasi yung karamihan ng mga researchers. Kaya dun yung unang nakita nila. But of course, there are other cave paintings outside of Europe. Marami po yan na hindi pa lang nadi-discover. Um, for, uh, for these cave paintings, they were means of communication, of course. Self-expression, syempre, may, may artistic side na rin ng mga tao before. And uh, for religious ceremonies as well. So, meron tayong mga ancient, ancient gods and goddesses during that time. So, they use these cave paintings as a way to express their beliefs and their religion. So, these are examples of cave paintings during that time. Siyempre, uh, para-paraan, kung ano yung meron sila, yun. Um, it's colored red because um, it's probably the material that they used to paint these cave walls. Uh, yung material niya probably ay galing sa mga, ano, sa mga bato-bato, sa lupa. If it's rich in iron, siyempre, medyo reddish yun. Kaya medyo, bakit sinasabi, bakit red, may pintura na sila. Of course, they can also use uh, pigment from fruits, di ba? Maraming prutas na merong iba't ibang kulay. So, they could have used all of those um, materials for their cave paintings. Yan. So, kung ano nakikita nila usually from nature, their surroundings, yun ang pinipaint nila. Yan. So, ito naman, it depicts the lifestyle of the people during that time. So, hunting hunting ang dinidepict ng ating wall wall painting our cave painting here and then let's go to the next stage syempre hindi na lang sila nagpe-paint nag-iimprove tayo nagkaroon tayo ng petroglyphs or what you call carvings on walls petro petros meaning rock glyph ayan yung mga writings na yan so carvings on walls rocks and bones so medyo meron silang ibang way to communicate with other people. So, uh, these petroglyphs appeared as early as 20,000 to 10,000 years ago. 
Again, just like your cave paintings, they are forms of communication, self-expression, religious ceremonies. But this time, um, the ancient people tried to explore the world outside of their caves. So, feeling nila kailangan nilang lumabas ng caves nila. So, nagamit nila yan to create maps um, using the stars, using the sun. Yan yung mga, yung mga sinaunang way, di ba? To to create maps para hindi sila mawala kung sakali mang mag-travel na sila outside of the comforts of their caves. So, these are examples of the petroglyphs. Yan. May meaning sa kanila yan. May meaning sa kanila yan. For Humes, siguro baka pag-aaralan nyo yan uh, in one of your subjects. Yan. Maybe this one is depicting one of their gods. Baka ito yung mga ancient aliens. Noong unang panahon, di ba? Ang lalaki nila. Bakit malaki? Kasi most likely, baka malaki rin yung nakita nila, di ba? During that time na nag-landing sa Earth. So, kaya sila ang parang, wow, sila yung God-tier people during that time. I, I don't know. I'm just con... <laughs> okay. Next, we have pictograms and ideograms. So, ano lang naman, nagde-develop lang ang mga ang mga technologies and ways to communicate with other people. So, this time, these are carvings and paintings in stone tablets. So, medyo portable na siya. Portable na siguro minsan, hindi na lang yung kung ano yung nandun sa gilid ng bundok ang kanilang susulatan. So, stone tablets, they tell stories or series of events. So, based on research, hindi na lang to parang random drawings. Parang meron na sa parang comic strip, parang ganun. Um, it became popular, they became popular around 5,000 years ago. So, papalapit na tayo sa ating present day. So, these are the stone tablets with pictograms and ideograms. So, may kwento dyan. Hindi ko lang alam kung ano yung kwento dyan. Maybe, uh, it's about food. Kasi parang merong, ano dun, oh, may rice uh, uh, stock or something. And it could be talking about agriculture or... or or food distribution baka tungkol yan sa ayuda ancient ayuda diba? hindi natin alam yes these are your stone tablets and then of course we go to ito medyo familiar siguro kayo dito the cuneiform hieroglyphics and the harapan and these are considered as the first writing systems technically they are not considered alphabet yet al an alphabetical system pero hindi pa naman but they are considered the first writing systems they use clay and stylus um, cuneiform in Sumer ito yung sa ano natin di ba yung mga Tigris Euphrates sa Iraq sa Iran Mesopotamia so ancient civilization hieroglyphics in Egypt so yung mga napapanood natin ng mga films about mummies pyramids yan maraming hieroglyphics sa mga sa mga design design ng mga ng mga tombs and uh, palaces Harappan is from India so around 3000 years ago sila uh, lumabas they are actually useful in accounting and counting so hindi lang natin alam kung inimbento ba nila yan dahil kailangan nila ng account, paraan para mag-account ng bagay-bagay or Nung na-invento yan, naisip nila, ah, maganda palang gamitin sa accounting. So, um, habang dinidiscuss natin itong uh, media evolution, pag-isipan nyo na rin yung next question natin doon sa forum, which is about technological determinism versus cultural determinism. Uh, when you say technological determinism, technology affects the way we live. Yung cultural determinism, baliktad naman. So, yung isa, si technological, si technology ang kumokontrol sa atin. So, for example, itong mga nadidiscover natin na writing system na to, yung writing system ba ang bumago sa paraan ng pamumuhay ng mga tao? Or, kung cultural determinism, dahil kailangan ng tao na magawa ang isang bagay, kailangan nilang mapadali yung buhay nila, nag-isip sila ng technology. So, does the society control the technology or does the technology control what the society needs? Parang ano rin yan? Parang yung iPhone natin? Yung iPhone, noon naman walang iPhone pero nabubuhay tayo. Pero nung lumabas yung iPhone, parang lahat tayo gusto na natin. Parang, I need an iPhone in my 
life. So does technology control you or do you control technology? Or is it a combination? Pwedeng sa simula, naisip mo na kailangan mo ng isang device that can do all of these things. Kaya inimbento mo ang iPhone. And then eventually, nakita mo na yung inimbento mong yun ang kumokontrol na pala sa buhay ng maraming tao. So it could also be a combination of technological of technological and cultural determinism. So it really depends on how you look at things. Pero ganito rin yun sa mga iniimbento natin. Naimbento ba sila dahil kailangan talaga ng tao kaya sila inimbento? Or nung naimbento sila, tignan natin kung magagamit pa sila ng tao. Diba? Next. So these are examples of um, cuneiform. Ayan. Kaya triangular yung shape niya kasi yan ba stylus? Hindi yan parang ball pen na ginaganyan. Hindi yan ganyan na parang nagsusunat na ball pen. Pinupush yan dun sa clay. Kaya siya pailalim. Diba? Dahil ganyan yung shape, if you push it sa soft clay, magiging ganyan ang itsura niya. Ganon sila magsulat. Tusok, tusok, tusok. Hindi siya yung parang nagsascribe na nagsusulat. So, that is how they write before. Tapos patutuyuin nila yung clay para tumigas. So, this is uh, hieroglyphics from Egypt. Um, researchers today tried to decode the hieroglyphics. And sa tingin daw nila, merong equivalent sa alphabet ang bawat letter. So, pwede na nating makonsider na sariling alphabet system ito ng, ng Egypt. And this is Harapan from India. Um, sorry kung medyo ano ah, kung medyo... Hindi ko pala nalagyan ng uh, hindi ko pala nalagyan ng labels yung mga yung mga photos natin but you can always ask questions. Mm, YouTube is not receiving enough video na naman. Parang ganito na naman yung last year. I don't know why. I last last week, sorry. Last week. I don't know why kung bakit merong may mga ganitong ang um, YouTube lately. I don't know if it's my settings. Anyway, so, ito na. Let's go to the alphabet. Uh, in your book, talagang sabi niya ang uh, turning point to the different inventions and discoveries in media and communication is the alphabet. Kasi nga naman, makakatulong talaga na makapag-communicate ng mas maayos kung meron tayong formal writing system just like your alphabet. So, you have the different alphabets, alphabet systems from different um parts of the world you have the Phoenician Greek Arabic Chinese and of course in the Philippines we have our by Bayin then you also have your Latin the Latin uh, alphabet Ro and then you also have the Roman um, Phoenician ang parang pinaka uh, malapit lapit sa alphabet natin if you look at this picture tignan nyo medyo may pagkakahawig yung mga um, letters ng Phoenician alphabet sa mga alphabet natin. Ito yun. Tapos, hanggang sa pinaka late na dyan yung Latin alphabet. So, this is by Bayin. So, napag-aralan nyo siguro yan in your other subjects. Uh-oh. Oh, ayun, sabi ko na eh. Sorry about that. I am restarting my PowerPoint. Okay, is it working now? Oops, ah, uh, nag-restart nga siya talaga. Okay, forward. Mamaya ka na Titanic. <laughs> Ayan. 
Okay, so uh, dito na tayo sa ating alphabet system. So, meron nga rin sa Pilipinas ang ating uh, baybayin na sarili nating um, system. Now, meron supposedly the video na that will show you um, the evolution of the writing system around the world. That's the evolution of the writing system. Now, ito naman, syempre, kung may writing system, saan sila magsusulat? So, meron na silang pinagsusulatan. Pwede yung walls, writings on the walls, stones, etc. Pero of course, na-discover din ang ating papel from the papyrus plant. So, maganda mapanood yung video kung paano gumawa ng papel using uh, the papyrus uh, matutuwa kayo doon kung paano siya magawa. So, nagawa sila ng papel but eventually, because papyrus was a little bit brittle, madaling masira ang mga, ang papel ga, gawa, gamit ang papyrus plant fibers uh, it was replaced by parchment and vellum yan yan, yung itsura ng papyrus plant malapit siya sa Nile River yan, ang lugar ni Cleopatra di ba, nandun, nandun ang mga karamihan ng mga ancient discoveries yan, so may video kung paano pinaprocess ang papyrus ang paper made out of papyrus just watch the video at home after that, they also had wax tablets madaling erase kasi tutunawin mo lang yung wax, mawawala na yung yung dati mong sinulat pero yun nga lang, pag nagkasunog nagkaroon ng sunog din during that time Kaya hindi nila nakita na uh, gamitin ang wax tablets all the time kasi nga natutunaw. So, sayang yung nagawa nila kasi hindi permanent yung records kasi nga madali siyang mawala. Yan, o ba Parang ganyan yung mga gamit natin ngayon. Siyempre, ngayon nga na made of glass, made of uh, metal, plastic, pero parang ganyan din noon. On this show, we often talk about the history of people or places. Okay, now we have books and printing. Nandito na tayo sa dulo ng prehistoric period. Kasi ito ang turning point ng lahat ng maraming bagay. Because printing uh, made it easy for information to spread around the world. Kasi nga, dumami na ang information. Mas madali nang ikalat ang information because of printing. Hindi na kailangang isa-isahin. Kung iisa-isahin mo yun, aabuting ka ng uh, sampung taon para lang makapag-share uh, ka ng information sa iba't ibang lugar. But because of printing, you're able to duplicate things na mas mabilis. During that time, mas mabilis. Relatively easier. Relatively faster. Kaya, importante talaga yung na-invento na ang ating 
printing, lalo na ng uh, movable printing, the metal type by uh, Johannes Gutenberg. So, yung sa kanya yung medyo importante talaga. Although, of course, the Chinese also had their woodblock printing, para yung stamp. Parang stamp, just like this picture. Ah, uh, wait. Tignan ko lang yung picture natin, ah. Babalikan ko siya. Ayan. Ito yung sa Chinese woodblock printing. Ah, uh, para siyang stamping type. If you, uh, if you are able to watch Mulan, na cartoon sa yung noon, yung may part doon na nagta-type si uh, Mushu ng letter to the general, I think. Uh, Tapos ang ginamit niya, yung paa ni Cricket, parang ganun yun. Uh, para siyang typewriter na parang stamp ang dating ng printing during that time. So, uh, kung meron man kayong panonoodin, I want you to watch all the videos related to the history of printing by Gutenberg. Marami tayong makukuha doon, marami tayong malalaman kung bakit importante ang printing at kung paano yung naging epekto niya sa society nung na-invent ang printing press. So, after noon, nandito na tayo sa mapapalapit na tayo doon sa industrial age, um, Johann Carolus of, uh, I, I think, German siya, ay nag-publish ng first newspaper in 1605 in France. Although German siya, sa France siya nag, nag-publish ng kanyang first newspaper. The first daily newspaper sa Germany rin. So, dun sa area na yun, kasi nga si Gutenberg, kung hindi siya German-Austrian, uh, let me check that. Okay. <coughs> In the Philippines in 19 and uh, in 1637 uh meron tayong parang newspaper na matatawag natin. Uh pwede kasing minsan lang 'yan lumabas or one page lang siya, The Successos Felices or Fortunate Events. It was launched in 1637 by Thomas Pinpin or the father of Filipino printing. Pero of course, merong mga magsasabi diyan 1800s pa nagkaroon talaga ng newspaper sa sa Pilipinas. Kasi yun parang ano lang siya, hindi siya regular na lumalabas talaga. So this is the video of uh, the invention of the printing press by Gutenberg. So I hope you watch that. Um, meron ding isang mas mahaba pa na video. You can just watch the second half of that video para lang makita nyo on how printing works, kung paano ba nakakapag-print sa papel using the method or using the invention of Gutenberg. Makikita nyo, para siyang isang malaking malaking stamp pad. Parang ganun. At doon yung makikita kung bakit tinatawag siyang movable metal type. Bakit nga ba siyang movable? Makikita nyo doon. Kasi yung mga letters, iisa-isahin gumawa ng sentences, ng words, one letter, para gumawa ng isang malaking malaking stamp. Parang gano'n ng um, concept ng movable printing type noong unang panahon. Now, let's go to the industrial age because it's already 1132. Industrial age from 1700s to the 1930s. Ito yung time na marami na ang machines. Steam engine, coal-powered engines and machines. So, mas uh, buminis ang trabaho. Mas maraming na-inventong gamit. So, during this time, the printing press was used for mass production. Ito na yung gamit na gamit na talaga. Marami nang gumagamit ng printing press. And then also, photography was invented by Joseph Nipsey. So, nagsimula na rin na magpiktura noong 1800s. And then, the Morse code and the telegraph was invented by Morse in 1930. Ito yung pinipindot na ganun. Basta yun. Makikita nyo may, 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 may mga videos tayo dyan. Yun yung pinipindot, Morse code. This is the picture, one of the pictures that was produced by Nipsey. So, ano yan, it's actually a building. Uh, may view yan ng garden. So, okay na yan, naprint nila yung picture na yan during that time. Malinaw na yan. Uh, during the industrial age, of course, uh, typewriters were also um, invented. So, kumbaga, para siyang printing press na medyo portable, pwede mo siyang maiuwi, pero hindi ka makakagawa ng maraming kopya. 
ng halos sabay-sabay. So, you had different you had different kinds of typewriters. Actually, sa mga inventions during that time, um, hindi rin natin talaga mapipinpoint kung sino yung una kasi marami dyan may prototype muna sila. Parang ito muna yung unang itsura niya and then finally, naging naglabas yung isa. Yung isa naman, siya yung uh, naglabas ng commercially successful na invention. So, um, kanya-kanyang perspective yan kung sino ba talaga ang una kung sino yung una na naka ng isang klase ng technology. So, during this time, nauso na rin ang QWERTY keyboard sa type writer. So, ito yung dalawa na yon Itong bilog na to, yan yung, yan, si Hansen Writing Ball. Yung Scholes and Glidden type writer, siya yung nasa right, ito. Yung nasa right. Yan yung medyo kahawig na ng mga type writers ngayon. At saka yan din yung kahawig ng um, computer keyboard natin ngayon, panahon na to. Also, the telephone was invented by Alexander Graham Bell in 1876. So, syempre, nakatulong talaga ang telephone sa communication because you are able to communicate uh, with people na malayo across long distances. So, major invention ang telephone. And then also during this time, ang dami because machine, ano to eh, age of the machine to eh. Uh, Louis and August Lumiere invented the camera and projector film technologies, cinematograph. Uh, wala kasi siyang accent, eh, cinematography. Okay, in 1895 and gave birth to cinema. So, sila ang unang naglabas ng pelikula. And during that time, nung pinalabas nila yung pelikula nila, Iba't ibang ano lang yan, sceneries lang yan. One of the most famous sceneries ay nasa video uh, yung arrival ng isang train sa kanyang station. And then during the screening of that film, yung mga tao talagang natakot sila. Kasi it looks realistic. And first time mo na makakita ng gumagalaw, ba? Nung wala pa yung film, ang nandyan lang ay white wall. O kaya siguro kotina, I don't know. White wall yan, walang kalaman-laman and then eventually biglang bumukas yung projector, biglang meron ng gumagalaw na train at yung train na yun ay papalapit sa iyo. So, ang balita nung time na yun, nagpanik ang lahat ng tao na nandun sa loob ng sinehan kasi it it looked so realistic during that time. Um ganun ka powerful ang ang visual medium na cinema. And then you also had the wireless telegraphy. So, ito yung gumagamit ng Morse code, telegraph ito pero yung unang mga telegraph noon kailangan kasi may wire so wired siya this time itong telegraph na to is wireless o ba uso na ang wireless noon gumamit si Marconi ng radio signal ng radio waves para makapag-send ng messages uh, wirelessly na wala nang kailangan ng wire at si Marconi abangan nyo to, baka nasa tanong natin to sa ating quiz B sa Zoom at hopefully sa YouTube din. Si Marconi, yung kanyang uh, invention, ang ginamit sa Titanic uh, para makapag-contact doon sa uh, magre-rescue sa kanila na pinakamalapit na ship na nandun din sa area ng Atlantic Ocean, which is the Carpathia, na, na rescue sila kasi nagamit nila yung wireless telegraph. Nakapag-communicate sila doon sa malapit-lapit na barko. Yun. So, thank you kay, kay Marconi for that invention. Maraming nailigtas na tao during the Titanic tragedy. So, this is the video of the arrival of the train. So, siguro pwede nating tingnan sandali. Tingnan natin. Ay, hindi. Ayaw niya. Panoorin nyo na lang daw sa bahay. Ayaw gumana ng aking <laughs> uh, mouse. Okay, next, uh, what are the other inventions? We also had the first commercial radio broadcast aired in Netherlands. It was aired in Netherlands in 1919 and then the U.S. followed. Um, sinasabi nila U.S. daw ang una, pero sabi ng Netherlands, sila daw ang nauna by one year. In the Philippines, it was in 1924, although some are saying na meron na rin daw nakapag-broadcast bago pa yan. Uh, pero private person kasi siya. So, ito, ito yung masasabi natin na first commercial 
radio broadcast in the Philippines in 1924 by the Electrical Supply Company. It's not a Filipino company. I think it's also an American company. Kasi panahon niya ng ano eh, panahon niya ng ng American occupation dito sa Pilipinas. Now, pasok tayo sa electronic age. So, pagpasok ng electronic age, ang mga ano dyan, kailangan may electricity na, may battery na. So, all of the technologies in this age are based on transistor, semiconductor, and electrical power. So, alam nyo sana yan, mga STEM students natin. So, ano na tayo, battery and electric power na tayo. So, yung mga technologies na naimbento during this time, nakadepende sa electricity and battery. So, commercial transistor radios were developed and successfully marketed in the US and Japan in the 1950s. So, these are commercial transistor radio. So, yung time na nagbo-broadcast sila, that is radio broadcasting. Pero hindi necessarily, necessarily na radio na pwede mong buhatin sa bahay. Hindi pa yun na-invento. Ngayon pa lang yung radio na mismong dun ka makikinig. And then, during this time, television was also developed around 1930s to 1950s. So, maraming stages na nangyari dyan bago, bago talaga na lumabas yung TV na kamukha nung ginagamit natin ngayon. Color television was also introduced in the 1960s. So, black and white pa, syempre, noong una. And then, eventually, naging color television tayo. And then, in the Philippines, the first television broadcast happened in 1953 by ABS or Alto Broadcasting System. Kaya nga, medyo nakakalungkot na na-shutdown ang ABS-CBN because ABS-CBN has a special place in the history of media and Philippine television kasi sa kanila nagsimula through the through ABS hindi pa siya ABS-CBN noon through ABS ang ating first television broadcast i hope you watch the history na binigay ko rin sa inyo kasi marami tayong matututunan doon kung ano ba ang pinagdaanan ng ABS-CBN through the years um, kasi kung tutuusin natin since sila yung unang television station in the Philippines parang sila yung kung ano yung napagdaanan ng Philippine television in general napagdaanan ng ABS-CBN so yun ang napili ko na na history na panoorin ninyo um, instead of history of GMA or history of TV5 kasi medyo mas bata pa sila so ito yung video ng ABS-CBN try to watch it So, ito, papasok na ang ating mga computers. In your computer class, computer history, um, matatandaan ninyo a lot of the history of computers. Karamihan dyan, malalaki sila, mga mainframes. Hindi yan yung parang laptop natin or yung desktop natin sa bahay na maliliit. So, when, when, when the first computers were invented, they were huge computers. Hindi sila pang bahay. So, yan, sila EDSA, UNIVAC, kung natatandaan nyo pa sa computer subject ninyo. And then, the development of the internet began in the 1960s. Pero ito yung internet na ginagamit lang so that the computers of one government agency can communicate with another computer from another government agency. Yun ang gamit ng internet noon. Hindi pa po ito yung parang internet na alam natin ngayon. So, nagsimula yan with your ARPANET, ano siya, government, military, internet system siya. So, ano siya? Hindi siya commercial. It's for government use. Personal computers were also developed in the 70s and 80s. And email was already invented in the 1970s because they needed to communicate. They they wanted to communicate with other people from long distances using the internet, using the network. Uh, kaya nagkaroon ng email in the 1970s by Ray Tomlinson. And then, syempre, hindi natin tatanggalin. Usually, tinatanggal ng ibang ibang media historians ang RK, ang game, ang video game. Pero actually, ang video game, dapat sinasama na rin yan sa, sa media and information. Because ang video game naman, just like cinema, although it's uh, it was built for entertainment, 
mainly for entertainment, merong nagagawa. May nagagawa sa communication. Isipin natin lagi, ah, ang media at information, hindi lang yan yung nagbibigay ka ng factual information. Entertainment is still information. Because you are trying to communicate ideas. You're trying to communicate um, concepts and perspectives to people. So, hindi lang yung, kumbaga, information or knowledge ang dapat natin i-consider as, uh, as information. So, video games, pwede rin yan as media. So, pag-isipan nyo na yan, baka may idea na kayo for your performance task. So, uh, it started with video games in the 70s. Ito yung mga malalaki na may joystick pa. And then, na-develop na lang yung mga pambahay later on. Yung mga, ano natin, mga PlayStation natin, mga, mga, ano ba, PlayStation, Sega, Xbox. So, the main players during that time were uh, Magnavox and Atari. Wala pa pong Nintendo. Hindi pa po. Hindi pa po sila established nun talaga. Handheld games were invented in the 1980s. Pero nung 1983, nagkaroon ng saturation of video games. At saka, ang daming video games na lumabas na parang, parang walang kwenta. Parang hindi napag-isipan yung klase ng game. Kaya nawala ng interest ang mga tao noon. They had what you call the video game industry crash of 1983. Nawala ng interest yung mga tao na lugi ang mga uh, video game makers and manufacturers. Until lumabas si Nintendo from Japan at inintroduce ang Famicom or Family Computer and the Nintendo Entertainment System and uh, they came up with they came out with uh, game titles like Super Mario Brothers Zelda, Metroid so itong mga to talagang ito yung uh, nagpabalik ng buhay ng video games kasi hanggang ngayon naman diba? sikat pa rin ang Super Mario uh, na invento rin ang World Wide Web during the Information Age. So, ito na yun. Ha, uh, there's a difference between Internet and World Wide Web. Ang World Wide Web is part of the Internet. Pero kasi ang World Wide Web, yan yung parang alam natin na Internet. Uh, World Wide Web made it possible for um, information to be spread, to be distributed, to be shared using the Internet. Okay? So, si World Wide Web under the umbrella of internet. Kasi ang internet naman, meron ding ibang gamit yan actually na hindi ginagamit commercially para mag-surf. Um, web browsers were also invented. Social networks, ayan, malapit na tayo sa mga ginagamit natin. Yan. So, na-invento na yan. So, video chats, ano pa ba? Search engines, nasanay tayo noon, hindi nyo siguro inabutan yung Yahoo, pero nagsa-search kami noon sa Yahoo. Pero ngayon, syempre, ang sikat na is Google. I-Google mo na lang ang mga bagay-bagay. And then, you have portable computers like laptops, netbook, tablets, smartphones, of course. Um, lahat tayo gumagamit na ng smartphones. Pero ako nasira yung isang, isang phone ko, yung Samsung ko. So, bumili ako ng not-so-smartphone. Pero, nagagamit ko pa rin sa pagte-text ang aking Samsung Keystone. Kaya, maganda pa rin yan. And then you have cloud storage. Nauuso yan si Google Drive, ang gamit na gamit ngayon. And then of course, you have your mobile and online video games. Um, like your ML. Mas gusto niyo ang ML kaysa sa MIL. Ako, Pokemon Go. <laughs> Pokemon Go. Yeah. so these are the remaining videos for you. Uh, I think this is, this video is about the history of the internet. This episode of Life Nagam yes. is brought to you. Tama. And this is, I think, um, the history of uh, social media in 90 seconds. Let's see. Yes.
but I will try to have an um, YouTube session on okay I think that's the end of the slideshow okay so uh, medyo mahaba habang slideshow yon ang dami yung panonorin na videos but uh, makakatulong yun um, hopefully maiisip nyo na rin kung ano nga ba talaga ang sagot kayo ba ay naniniwala sa technological determinism or doon sa cultural determinism um, sino ba dapat ang uh, nagsishape uh, does technology shape the society or does society shape technology or um, interchangeable siya na kung meron man tayong naimbento na technology because of the necessity sa tingin natin kailangan kaya tayo ang nag-control ng technology pero posible rin na after a few years yung technology na yun mag -e evolve na yung ibang tao na sa tingin nila ay hindi nila kailangan ng technology na yun in the first place ay biglang makita nila ang value ng technology na yun because that technology uh, is already changing the way they live or the way they do things diba? pwede rin ganun kasi na, na pwedeng tayo ang nakaisip na gumawa ng bagong invention pero yung invention na yun took a life of its own and started to change a lot of people's lives, either for good or for bad okay um, so it's almost 12 o'clock I'll be ending this yeah, I'll be ending this live session, so um, tomorrow, Zoom um Hopefully, maayos, makapasok ako sa Zoom ng maayos. I'll try my best para makapasok because we are all working from home. And then, Friday is also Zoom session. So, um, tignan natin kung marami makakapasok sa Zoom for the online uh, people. Uh, baka magkaroon ako ng, magkaroon muna ng konting quiz B, yung minention ko sa Facebook group. And then, my question and answer siguro ng Friday. Tignan natin. And then, I'll try to have another YouTube live on Saturday. Kung okay lang sa inyo, di ba? Aagahan ko na lang yung pag-announce. Kung meron mang another YouTube live on another day outside of the scheduled uh, school days. So, thank you. At meron pa rin tayong natitirang four viewers. Nag-retract ng message sila Joris at si 13SXS. Ano kaya yung message nyo? Hindi ko na nakita. But anyway, hindi naman po kailangang mag-present po dito sa YouTube live natin. So, hopefully, yung mga hindi nakapanood ng live, pinapanood nyo ngayon sa ibang oras. Baka pinapanood nyo ito ngayon ng gabi. Or pinapanood nyo ito ng, uh, ng Thursday. Thursday ng umaga. Or maybe Friday ng umaga. Uh, just a few reminders. Please, again, please try to answer all the forum questions in the, on the CLE download everything meron po i i tried to uh rearrange the the layout of the CLE kasi uh, para hindi kayo malito ginawa ko na siyang one section yung ano doon nakagrupo na lahat ng lesson 1 materials nakagrupo lahat ng lesson 2 materials para hindi niyo kailangan buksan lahat lagi so kasi maiipon yan so nilagay ko na rin doon actually yung copy of the syllabus so that you know kung paano, dapat pala binigay ko na yun noon pa para alam nyo kung paano ang takbo ng ating um, SEM, ating semester ano ba yung susunod na lesson, ma-anticipate nyo na kung na yung susunod uh, ilang weeks pa ba bago ang, ang ang performance task so, the syllabus is also there, you can download it uh, Microsoft Word po siya um, if you notice um, a lot of the PowerPoint files and the word files are protected. Uh, may tatanungin siyang password. So, para lang hindi nyo biglang madelete yung laman or something, uh, nilagyan ko po ng password. Hindi nyo po kailangan ng password para mabuksan. Just click read only. Kasi kailangan nyo lang namang basahin. Hindi nyo po sila kailangan uh, galawin. Um, for lesson 2, if you have read the entire study guide for lesson 2, Evolution of Media, makikita nyo sa evolution, ay doon sa evaluation part, sa last part na merong quiz wala po muna wala po muna ng quiz yun kasi an, hindi pa rin tayo stable hanggang ngayon alam ko medyo 
patapos ng September pero kasi we still don't have the books um, wala pa pong CLE accounts ang lahat so wala po munang quiz uh, baka magkaroon lang tayo ng uh, quiz a few days before your exam kasi sa totoo lang wala pa tayong grading system wala pang binibigay ang DepEd so kung wala pa ibig sabihin we will be using the old system yung meron tayong 50% PT yung mga ganun uh, pero kung biglang mag-release na ang DepEd kasi malapit na rin ang pasukan nila magre-release na sila ng new grading system um, i-inform namin kayo kung meron mang changes dyan kasi nga we are hoping na for this year pass-fail muna tayo um, kasi lahat nagka-adjust pa eh so as long as the student tries his best to uh, accomplish the tasks um, diligently um, kahit malate man yan um, ma-accomplish lang niya ma-complete niya okay na yun pass, pass, pass muna tayo ngayon kasi nga yung situation natin um, so it's 11.55 uh, meron pa ba akong announcements uh, wala naman na yata uh, nasa Facebook group na yun kung meron man just uh, accomplish CLE I-PM na po ako ng mga ibang nag-submit sa akin para umangat po sa messenger or sa email ko yung message ulit, mag-thumbs up lang para po para sa iba na hindi nyo na mahanap yung file or medyo hindi nyo paggamay ang CLE pero gusto nyo nang magawa yung mga bagong activity I'll just mark your lesson 1 activities as complete dahil naipass nyo naman na sa akin sa messenger para magawa nyo na sa CLE yung mga lesson 2 forum natin. Okay? So, actually, ano, mag mag-send ako ng screenshot soon kasi meron pong way sa CLE para makita kung sino yung kompleto na sa requirement. Madali po siya. I-click ko lang yun. Nandun na makikita. Check, check, check na kung sino yung ano. Automatic po kasi sa CLE. Yun ang maganda doon. And then, I'll also try to upload a quiz sa CLE para lang matest nyo rin kung paano mag-quiz. Pero baka nakapag-quiz naman na kayo in your other subjects so baka alam niyo rin kung paan alam niyo na rin kung paano mag-work ang quizzes na ginagawa sa CLE so i think that's it it's 11:57 again thank you for those who were able to watch live pero thank you din sa mga siguradong manonood pa mamayang hapon bukas sa susunod this weekend so if you have questions just uh, send me a uh, private message on Messenger or ask me a question dito sa Facebook group natin kung saan nakapost yung link ng live stream na to. Doon po tayo pwedeng magtanong. Okay po. So, kung nabasyo na yung study guide, tataka kayo bakit ganito yung aking suot. Siyempre, Avengers Endgame. Avengers ang theme ng ating study guide number 2. Uh, so, basahin nyo na. Sayang yun pinag ko yun. So, sign din. Basahin po natin. Study guide. Uh, open the PowerPoint presentation. Watch the videos. Uh, click the links. Nandun na po lahat yun. If you have questions, hindi nyo mahanap, magtanong lang po sa akin. So, again, thank you very much sa mga nanood at manunod pa lang ng ating MIL episode number 3 for lesson number 2. Thank you again. And have a nice weekend. I'll see you online learners uh, on Zoom tomorrow and on Friday.